Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Unity VN series. In this video we are going to start implementing labels. For those of you who don't know, labels are a method in RenPy of flagging a area of code as a specific label which you can then call or jump to depending on what you need. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the jump functionality but before we do that we actually have to create a new class so back in our editor we're going to right click in our scripts folder and we're going to create a new c sharp script and we're going to call this label unity will go ahead and do what it needs to do and then we're going to go ahead and open that up in our code editor now we don't need most of this stuff so let's get rid of the void in the start like that and we're going to actually remove the minor behavior functionality as well because this is going to be a proper class so the first thing we need to do is give it some properties and we only need two properties for our label the first thing we need is a public string label name and then we also need a public integer called label index like so nice and simple now what we also need to do now is build our constructor. So we're going to say public label string label name. In fact, yeah, you go. Unity's gone and done all that for us. So we can actually just delete the stuff that we added in there like so. Cool. So there we go. That's our constructor for our class. We're just going to go ahead and make sure those tabs line up and make sure everything else is hunky dory. Yep, basically that's it. So we can save that file now. And that is our label class completed. So we can go ahead and close and then jump back in to our input decoder script. And what we have to do is create a list of labels. So in our top area here, what we need to do is create public static list of labels and we'll call it labels like that. Nice and simple. And it's a new list of the label class. And we can just remove that space for there. Nice and easy. So what we've done essentially is we've created a type of object called label, which consists of nothing but a name and a number. And the number is going to correspond to the line of our code. So think about this in terms of basic. What we're essentially doing is instead of saying go to 10, go to 20, etc. What we're doing is we're, instead of using numbers, 1 to 10 or so on, we're actually just putting a string in there, a word, and then we're telling our code, we're telling Unity, which line of code that name corresponds to, and then that will allow us to jump backwards and forwards to them. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm actually going to migrate some stuff, because if you'll notice in our testing script, we still have these variables that they just don't need to be where they currently are realistically the only thing we need to do is reference these variables from this file and actually put them into the input decoder so what i'm going to do is precisely that so i'm going to take our uh, our variables here like so i'm going to control x them from there and then i'm going to put them here like so now, obviously, we can't have these private anymore because we are referencing them from another file. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put not serialized there so that they don't appear in the editor. And now we can make them all public. Public static to be more precise. Public static there. And then we can leave that one as a public. Public static there. Public static there and that's about all we need off of there now obviously our testing script now is going to have a buttload of errors so what we actually need to do is put input decoder dot at the beginning of each one of these lines where there is an error so I'll just copy that and we'll just paste that in 
Now you might be thinking, oh my god, this is a lot of work, but there's a reason we're doing this, and we want the input decoder class to be as autonomous as possible. We don't need it, we don't want it to be able to, to need to rely on variables from other scripts. So this may seem like a lot of work, but once we're done, we're done. And then we can actually control variables from the input decoder script without requiring to go to other scripts for it. So that, I believe, yeah, we've got a couple more. Just use the mouse to paste that there, paste that there, and paste that there. So now we're error free. Yes, we have got a little bit more code in here, but again, further down the line, this is gonna make a little bit more sense. Now we can come back into our input decoder script and we are good to go. So at the bottom, what we are going to do is we're going to create a new method and we're going to call this one read script. And again, this is going to become much more apparent further down the line. But for now, we'll just create a new region. Loading script, etc. And then we'll put an end region in there, like so. And then what we need to do is go public static void read script. Yes, I know I made a typo there. Public static, there we go. Problem solved. Now, apparently I've managed to delete a, there we go, that's better. I must have deleted it when I was uh, playing around earlier. Okay, so now we've got that. Now what we want to do is for int x equals zero. X is less than commands dot count x plus plus. So we're going through all of our commands like so. And then we're going to say if commands x dot starts with label so we're saying if the first word in our command is a label then we are going to say var label split we're going to split up our string towards commands x dot split and we're going to use a space as our splitting character uh, I don't need that extra space in there that would be silly and next thing we're going to do is we're going to say labels dot add if I could remember how to spell that would be amazing labels dot add and we're going to say new label and we're going to go with label split Uh, one comma x so we're going to feed in all we have to do when we want to declare a new label let's just use this in pseudocode if i was to go label uh, this label then all i would be doing is putting this in as the first variable as a string which is going to correspond to label name and then x is going to be the label index so the line of code that that label refers to is going to be the line that the information that gets put into the x property so that when we call to jump to a label we know exactly which line of code we need to jump to and that is basically all we need to do now all we have to do is actually call our read script in our testing script so if we were to go here and at the very beginning if we went input decoder read script now we're going to go through and populate our list of labels with whatever we're doing in here so we actually need to create a couple of labels here so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to create a new label i'm going to do it after creating the character because there's no need to jump to the area where we create the character because all we're going to end up doing is creating more than one so if i were to say label uh, let's start let's just call this label a start because that's a fairly kind of generic 
thing. So we now have the labels enabled. Now what we need to be able to do is actually jump to them. So in order to do that, we have to actually create another method. So we're going to do that just above the loading script. And we'll call this one public static static void jump to. And then we're going to say string string to pass as a by now you should realize I use that for pretty much everything I'm going to pass and I've also put capital T O there let's just get rid of the capital O so that we don't confuse matters further down the line so what we're going to say is var temp string split equals string to pass dot split and we're going to use a space as our splitting thing and then we're going to say for each label l in labels so we're going to run through our list of labels and we're going to say if l dot label name is equal to temp string split one Then we're going to say command line equals l dot label index paused here equals false. Okay, explanations to what we do. So we are going to take in the command that's fed into our passing script. If it sees the word jump, which we're going to put up here in a moment, then we're going to feed the string into this method. This method will then split the, the cut command into its properties, which will be the word label, which will be string temp string split zero, and then temp string split one will be the word that we've put in afterwards, i.e. the label name. What we'll then do is we will say, we'll go through a list of labels of which there should be many at some point further down the line, and we'll find the one that corresponds to the label that we've just called. And then we will set command line to be the label index. So we're now telling Unity which command line to jump to. And then we'll say paused here equals false so that it will actually do it. It will jump to that line of code without a delay. Okay, so, so far so good. Now what we need to do is we actually need to put in our command up here that calls it so if args zero equals jump then jump to string to pass and it's that simple happy day so now we've done that we can go back into our testing script we've got a label start there what i will do is I will put a new line of code, a new command into here. And what I'm going to do, my very last bit will be to say, jump start. Awesome. And one last thing that we need to do that I've just remembered before we go jumping ahead is we actually need to call our read script after we filled the list of commands. Otherwise nothing's going to happen because it's searching through an empty list. So we actually need to do that once we've populated our list with commands. So once we jump back into our editor, if we now hit play, what we should be seeing is that our game will just loop over and over again. And as you can see, I just keep on clicking and it will keep creating images because I've actually moved the jump commands to before we call the screen commands. So these will just keep generating and they'll sit there fat, dumb and happy and our code will just keep on looping. So if I wanted to rectify the issue with the images continuously creating over and over again, I can just move that to after the screen statement there. And then if I was to run it again, then I will get what you'll see is I'll go through and I'll go through again. And if I leave it for three seconds, you can see that it actually removes the extra image layers that we've created because it's uh, calling now the screen command. So that's our jump functionality added now. 
So hopefully you found that useful, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.